Hi there, in this video, we're going to connect Codesys to Factory IO, with these applications, to simulate and control a simple industrial process. Note that, as I mentioned at the end of the previous video, Kepsiver X and Factory IO software, were explained and used during our previous courses. So, you can use the PLC Goods YouTube channel to learn them. Also, you can download their demo version easily, and use them during the Codesys course. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content, we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Well, let's start the video. If you remember, this simple program was written and tested during the previous video. The next step is configuring symbols in Codesy software, which can be shared with other devices or applications. After that, Codesy's control win, will be used to create a virtual PLC. Then, Kep Server X software will be used to create an OPC server. Note that, some variables will be defined by Kep Server X, which will be connected to my program variables. On the other side, Factory IO can be connected to the OPC server. Therefore, my program will be able to control the equipment inside Factory IO software. Alright, let's start with this program which was written and tested in the previous video. As the first step, I must determine which variables can be shared with other devices. So, let me right click on applications, and add a symbol configuration to my project. Now, I must execute the build command, to be able to select variables. Inside the symbol configuration tab, I can determine which variables can be shared with other devices. Here are my variables. Let's select all of them. Again, let me use the build icon and then close the symbol configuration tab. The next step is to run my device. It's Codesys Control Win V364 bit. So, let me find it in my computer and then run it. Okay, maybe this error appears for you too. Also, if I open the code meter, which has been installed by Codesys, I won't find any license. To solve these problems, you may need to disable your antivirus, but I didn't need it. Then, let's find multikey.sys file located on this path. As you see I cannot delete this file. So, let me rename it. After that, I need to restart my computer. Well, before restarting, let me save my Codesys project. Alright, after restarting, I've opened my Codesys project. Again, let's run my device. Codesys control win v364 bit. As you see, at this time, it's working correctly. Also, if I open code meter, I will see these two licenses. Otherwise, you will need to use the file menu to import them manually, which are located here. Well, the Codesys Control V364 bit, has been run as my virtual PLC. Inside Codesys, double click on the device item, after that, inside the communication settings tab, execute the scan network command. 
After scanning, select the founded device and click on OK. For the first time, Codesys will ask you to determine a name and password for the device. After that, you will need to enter the device name and password, which have been entered for the first time. As you see, the Codesys has been connected to the virtual PLC successfully. Note that, you can go to the users and groups part, scan devices, and then change its password. Well, let's skip this step. Now, let's download the program and also all determined settings, to the Codesys control win as the virtual PLC. Alright. The next step is connecting the created virtual PLC, to an OPC server that can be created by Kep Server X software. Note that, this software was explained and used during our Delta PLCs course. Especially this video can help you to learn how this software works. Now, let me create a channel inside the Kep server. In this window, select the Codesys option, and don't change other settings. Now, I must connect the virtual PLC to the created channel. So, I can click here, or here, to add my virtual PLC. Now, I need to change the type of communication, to Codesys V3 Ethernet. After that, let's use default settings, except the address type. I select the second option for that. Now, the logical address field must be filled. My virtual PLC or device address can be founded here. As you see, the default port number has been detected automatically. Finally, I need to enter my device name and password. You must write your device information. Alright, the necessary settings for making a connection, between the virtual PLC and OPC server have been told. The next step is to define some tags, that can identify the selected symbols within the PLC program. Remember, I've selected all these variables inside the symbol configuration window. Well, the next step is to define some tags, that can identify these variables. Select the added device, and then click here to add new tags. Now, inside the name field, I must write the new tag name. For example, related to the first variable, A, I write this tag, FIO underscore A. After that, inside the address field, I must write the address of my first variable, A. Pay attention to arrows to learn what is the address of the first variable. Now, it's better to determine the variable type. As you know, it's boolean. Similarly, I need to define 5 more tags, related to these variables. Let me use the copy and paste technique, to define them.
Alright, this channel with one device and these tags have been created. Now, let's enable the OPC server, and check the connection state between the created tags, and my program variables. Alright, inside the OPC quick client window, let me select my created channel and device. Here are my defined tags, and as you can see, their connection qualities are good. Now, let's check the created connection between the OPC server and my program. For example, let me change the state of two variables, B and C. As you can see, inside the OPC server, the state of these two tags have been changed too. The connection between the codes and the OPC server has been created successfully. The next step is designing an industrial process inside factory I.O. software, and then, connect it to my PLC program via the OPC server. Note that, this software has been explained and used during our previous courses. Its demo version supports all features for 30 days. Now, let's design a simple system. Note that, to change an equipment height, press Ctrl plus V on your keyboard. Well, the belt conveyor has a motor, that I want to control it with these two push buttons. The green one will be used to turn it on, and the yellow one, will be used to stop it. Now, I am defining a suitable name for the two inserted push button. Remember, this is my PLC program, I will connect the belt conveyor and two push buttons to these variables. Now, let me use two selectors, and then, I will connect them to these two variables of my PLC program. Finally, let me add a warning light. I'll connect it to the last variable of my PLC program. Ok, I've designed my system. Now, I'm going to connect inserted equipment to my PLC program variables, via the created OPC server by KEP server. Therefore, let's select the driver's item of the file menu. Then I select the OPC client data access as the factory I.O. driver. Now, let's click on configuration option. As you see, automatically, factory I.O. detects all available OPC server. Select the created OPC by KEP server X. Now, let's click on the browse items, to find available tags inside the created OPC server. As you see, here are a lot of tags, except my tags. I can increase this number to find more tags. Well, let me use a better way to find my tags. Remember, I've started all tags with these three letters, FIO. So, I can use these three letters to filter the result. As you see, Factory IO has founded these variables, which have been defined in the OPC server. Remember, 
they are connected to the variables which have been used inside my PLC program, and now, I can connect the used equipment inside factory I.O., to these tags which are connected to my PLC program via the OPC server. Alright, all connection settings have been done. Now, let's test them. Before that, let me sort my windows, to have a better view of the PLC program, OPC server, and factory I.O. Now, let's test the second part of the PLC program. As I explained in the previous video, based on the X or logic, when I change the state of either selectors, the state of the warning light will be changed too. Alright, the simple program with Boolean operator, has been tested with factory IO. In the next video, I'll start timer and counter instructions. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.